If you guys have tuned into the channel for any length of time, you would know that I'm always talking about how great of pets that monitor lizards are. Now, while I do love them, the, th the truth of the matter is that a lot of them make very, very awful pets for those who are not insane. So today, I thought I would knock the rust off a little bit, we'd have some fun, and I'd tell you guys some of the worst pet monitors that money can buy you. I haven't done a sit down video like this in a while, so I'm excited to kind of get back into it. Huge, huge thank you to you guys for 2,000 subscribers. We're basically at 2,100 now. This is crazy. Also, I did end up starting a Patreon. It's going to be the first link in the description if you do want to support me in that way. It's going to be a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. You get first look at everything and it's just going to keep getting better and better. So if you are interested in that, don't feel obligated, but it's the first link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, these monitors are in no particular order except for maybe the last one as the worst pet monitor you could probably buy and and again don't get me wrong these can make great pets for the right people but the right people to keep these animals are few and far between so this first one should be a very very hot take a good way to start the video out and that's going to be the asian water monitor now there are many many water monitors that are native to asia the name asian water monitor though does usually refer to Varanus salvatore, which is one of the largest lizards on the planet. It's one of the most popular and notorious Varanids, usually due to its pretty good demeanor and its giant size. These animals can commonly reach lengths from up to seven to eight feet, and there are reports of them getting even bigger in the wild, some say up to 10 feet, although that hasn't really been confirmed. Seven to eight feet is not uncommon. The reason that they're bad pets for most people it's not because they're overly defensive or super energetic. It's because they are so big and so popular that they usually end up in the wrong hands. The downfall of the water monitor in captivity is that they breed super, super readily and they lay a lot, a lot of eggs, which means that there is a lot, a lot of baby water monitors to go around. And let's just face the facts. Not many people can properly provide for a lizard that can get up to eight feet long. Now, I have a lot of good friends that do breed water monitors, but if we're being honest, the number of water monitors that are being hatched out every year far, far exceeds the amount of good homes there actually are for these beautiful animals. I'm sick of seeing these things in crammed, tiny enclosures with fat guts, poor lighting. It's just got to stop. These animals need a giant enclosure, like big bedroom size or larger. And not many people have a spare bedroom that they can turn into a jungle. Additionally, they're not even that expensive. So for an imported water monitor, you can get your hands on something like this for as little as maybe 150 bucks. So that's why the water monitor is one of the worst pet monitors money can buy. Hey, make sure you guys subscribe to Will Exotic. Now, the second animal on this list is going to be none other than the notorious Nile monitor. This also includes other imported monitors like savannas, mangroves, roughnecks. I'm gonna cover all of that in a different video on why imported monitors make terrible pets. But let's just stick to Nile monitors for now. Nile monitors are awful pets. I'm just gonna come out and say it right now. For 99% of people, they are absolutely awful pets. They're one of the worst animals you can buy if you are not ready to dedicate your space, your time, and a good sum of money for the foreseeable future. Again, firstly, they're all imported. There is virtually no captive breeding going on. Now, I'm sure someone out there is breeding them in their, in their garage. They have like 10 pairs of Niles and they're producing captive bred babies, but no one mainstream is doing it. No one is posting about it, so we don't know about it. These things get huge, like six plus feet, and they need a ton of space. They need, just like the water monitor, a ton of heated water. Now, being that they are one of the biggest lizards in all of Africa, if you add that big size in with their never really so great attitude, I mean, let's just be honest, they're notorious for not being very friendly. They can potentially be dangerous to someone who does not know what they're doing. These guys routinely will steal eggs from the nests of crocodiles. They will go toe to toe with lions. That's, I mean, what more needs to be said? The method of them actually getting here is not good either. Hundreds, maybe even thousands, are harvested from the wild every year. They're shoved in boxes, riddled with parasites, feces, all of those diseases are transferring to each animal in that confined space. And when they get here, only a small percentage survive, and even a smaller percentage make it to adulthood in captive hands. You gotta have the time and the money to make sure your animal's healthy, to treat it for parasites, to treat it for different types of diseases and viral infections. Many either can't do this or don't want to do this because they see the price of the Nile monitor, which you can get them for like 20, 25 bucks. Back in the day you could, I don't know, they're about 50 bucks now, it's still cheap. But they see the price of the lizard and they don't want to spend thousands of dollars on treatment because you know what, the, the lizard's 50 bucks, we can just get a new one, which is the wrong mentality to have by the way. It's one of the worst impulse buys you can make. 
please, for the love of everything that is holy, do not buy a Nile monitor. You guys know what this last one is going to be. Now, this is probably the worst lizard, one of the worst reptiles that 99.9999% of people could possibly pay for and buy and keep in their home. But for that 1%, they may be the coolest animal you can own. Let me start by saying I love, love crocodile monitors, Verena Salvadora. I will 100% own a pair or more of these guys in the future. As it stands right now, I'm by no means ready or prepared to own this animal. And I fully acknowledge that fact for, for the reasons we're about to talk about. They are debatably the longest lizard in the world. It's said that they can exceed the length of the Komodo dragon, which is 10.3 feet on record, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct. There's reports of them reaching 12 to 14 feet in their native ranges. Not only are they the longest lizard in the world, they have a very, very impressive display of tools. They're an arboreal lizard, so they love to climb. They love to be up high in the trees and in the branches. So their claws are wicked, absolutely wicked. They have some of the sharpest teeth of any reptile. They have the longest teeth of any lizard because they primarily feed on avian prey up in the treetops. They need to have these teeth so that they can subdue these prey items and they can't fly away. Their tail acts as both a very, very strong, long whip and almost a fifth limb. It's fully prehensile and allows them to keep their balance up in the treetops. The vast majority are still wild caught and imported here in the pet trade. Now there is some captive breeding going on, which is amazing. It's popping up more and more, but one of those guys will cost you about 10 bands is what a baby captive bred croc is gonna run you. So again, most people will just go for the cheaper imported animal. It'll cost you one to $2,000, maybe three, depending on the quality and the locale of the animal. You need to be incredibly respectful and careful around all animals, but especially croc monitors, because a bite from a crocodile monitor, even a sub-adult or a juvenile can be life-altering, extremely life-altering. A bite from an adult, you will never forget. Most people are not equipped to handle a lizard of this size and of this degree, something this intense, and be able to provide the right enclosure, something super, super tall. Again, again these guys are arboreal. And a lot of people are not equipped to take that risk, to try and socialize a probably traumatized animal. Now, the thing is, monitor lizards don't forget. So as soon as that animal is interact, interacts with a human, it's like a video camera that starts recording. The method that these guys are harvested in is usually like deforestation or they'll have trappers go out and get them. They have to subdue these animals. They have to keep themselves safe, first of all, but they have to subdue these animals. They have to pack them away and then they get shipped over here when they're wild caught. A lizard that traumatized and with that type of attitude against people while having the size that it does and the tools that it possesses can be extremely dangerous and it is not for the average keeper or, or or most keepers to deal with croc monitors are some of my favorite animals in the whole world but you need to have experience with monitors other large lizards before you even think about dabbling into croc monitors i'm not gonna lie to you guys before i before i ever touch them i want to get trained by someone and i want to be around them more i want to learn the ins and outs and then i'll keep them but that's years down the line so that's three of what I believe are the worst pet monitors for most people. Now, it kind of sounds like I'm hating on these animals. I'm definitely not. All three of these creatures are beautiful. These animals are not evil. They're not out to get you. But they can be defensive if they're not treated properly and if they're not cared for properly. Things can go south. Now, there are some keepers out there that can care for these animals and give them incredible, amazing lives, and they can make amazing pets. Just make sure you respect the animal and don't settle for anything less than excellent husbandry and excellent care. Again, I want to thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. It's just ridiculous. Like, honestly, at this point, I just can't even believe it still to this day. Patreon is first link in the description if you're interested in supporting the channel and checking that out. Guys, there's a lot of cool stuff happening on the Patreon. Probably the coolest thing I've ever done rept in my reptile career just happened a couple days ago. Patreon knows about it. If you guys don't know about it, you got to check out the Patreon because we'll just say we got a brand new edition. And it is a fresh new edition. We'll just say that. But again, I love you guys. Appreciate your support. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.